Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage of Faithful Living Home. This week's topic is recreational Christianity. I heard that expression recently and it kind of gave me a moment. It's like, hmm, I need to think about this. That's a really interesting uh, way of phrasing things. And it kind of stuck in my mind and I thought, I really need to ponder on this some more. So I have a question for you. Can you say without hesitation that Yahweh, God, is first in your life? Now I can, but it wasn't the case for most of my life. And even after becoming a born-again Christian, And it gave me some time to think about all these things and kind of look back at things. So let me give you a bit of a definition for recreational Christian. It kind of goes like this. I'll be a Christian as long as it serves me, as long as it's not inconvenient, as long as it's comfortable, as long as it's easy, as long as I can explain everything my own way, as long as I can continue doing whatever I want, pretty much. Do you get where I'm going with this? So before we go any further, I would like you to um, open your Bible if you have it handy and uh, to read Deuteronomy chapter 6 along with me. I'll be reading from the Legacy Standard Bible, which is called LBS for abbreviation. Um, It's a newer translation of the Bible that is a word-for-word, very accurate um, translation from the Hebrew and Greek. If you were to look at the original text, you would find the whole um, connection between everything and like the English really then really portrays the intensity and and the the dialogue and and the text really well Uh, but of course you can follow from your King James version or um, the Amplified Bible is also a good one Uh, but I'll be reading from the LSB and it's not too too long of a chapter so if you'll bear with me. I have allergies today. My apologies if I sound a little bit nasal. (laughs) Um, The fine hay dust, we have bunnies, and uh, yesterday my husband was really brushing off because it's the change of season, and we have our bunnies that kind of shed their fur, and their fur gets really fluffy and everything, but because they go in their hay bins to eat and sleep and, and play and do all kinds of stuff, There are little fine particles of hay that get into their fur and then then they get freed around. And last night my husband was here on the couch and he was brushing one of our bunnies really good. And she was shedding a lot of fur. (laughs) And um, I forgot I should have vacuumed before sitting on here because there was no hair really to see. But the fine dust of the hay gets to me and then of course it literally triggers an allergic reaction so my apologies if i i'm gonna try not to sneeze and and do things like that but let's see how it goes (laughs) thank you for bearing with me so deuteronomy chapter 6 is um, the commandment to love yahweh now this is the commandment the statutes and the judgments which Yahweh your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do it in the land where you're going over to possess it, so that you and your son and your grandson might fear Yahweh your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I am commanding you all of the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. O Israel, You shall listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly, just as Yahweh, 
the God of your fathers has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our God, Yahweh is one. You shall love Yahweh your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as phylacteries between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Then it will be when Yahweh your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you great and good cities which you did not build, and houses full of all good things which you did not fill, and hewn cisterns, um, wells, which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant, and you will eat and be satisfied. Then beware, lest you forget Yahweh, who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. Yahweh your God, you shall fear, and him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not walk after other gods, any of the gods of the people who surround you. For Yahweh your God in the midst of you is a jealous God. Lest the anger of Yahweh, your God, be kindled against you, and he destroy you from the face of the earth. You shall not put Yahweh, your God, to the test, as you tested him at Massa. You should diligently keep the commandments of Yahweh, your God, and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of Yahweh, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land which Yahweh swore to give your fathers, by driving out all your enemies from before you, as Yahweh has spoken. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, what do the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments mean which Yahweh our God commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, We were slaves to the Pharaoh in Egypt, and Yahweh brought us from Egypt with a strong hand. Moreover, Yahweh showed great and calamitous signs and wonders before our eyes against Egypt. Pharaoh and all his household. But he brought us out from there in order to bring us in to give us the land which he had sworn to our fathers. So Yahweh commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahweh our God for our good all our days and for our survival as it is today. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before Yahweh our God, just as he commanded us. As a recap, I think that verses 4 to 6 in that passage um, are a really good uh, summary in a sense. Um, I'll do the recap from the Amplified Bible. So it's still Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verses 4 to 6 in the Amplified. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one, the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and mind and with all your soul and with all your strength, your entire being. 
These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be written on your heart and mind. <sighs> so back to recreational Christianity. We have to keep in mind when we pray for certain things that we would like to see in our lives, that we also must agree that, nevertheless, Yahweh's will shall be done. God's will shall be done always. <clears throat> now, for most of my life, as I've discussed in some of my previous videos, um, I wasn't a born-again Christian, and I was a lost sheep. And so, you know, I, I was uh, born and raised in the Roman Catholic, but... My parents were not really going to church, and my mother was massively pagan. And um, so anyway, you know, I would pray from time to time, uh, but it was to ask God to make my own wishes come true without regards to whether it was aligned with the Bible or not, and basically asking Him to make things come true that I wanted, desired, uh, usually pointless stuff, you know, and treating Yahweh God like he was a genie in a bottle. You know, oh, please, please, God, make this happen, or oh, please, please, God, I really, really would love to have this, and I'll listen to you always if you make this happen, please, please, you know, and and stuff. And how insulting is that? <sighs> I have repented from this, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, but... It took me a long time, even I, after I became a born-again Christian, um, before I learned that I always first had to need to, to ask him, first of all, if that was something he wanted for me and for my life, or if there was something else he had in mind, and then ask him to guide me through the process of getting there. Because remember... Without Yahweh, our God, our Father, Abba, we are nothing. And if we try to do things on our own, that's things of the flesh. Now, if it's something that happens to align with what he has planned for you, he might go, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, right? And he might grant you some things, or to a certain degree, but... You need to ask him first every single time. And I sure wasn't doing that. And I'm figuring I can't be the only one on the planet. So that's why I'm sharing this message. Okay? Uh, it's not a judgment on anybody. <laughs> I'm talking about stuff I did myself and, and lived myself through. Right? Um, so a few days ago, I was praying, and I was praying for, <coughs> excuse me, a Rema message from the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh clearly whispered to me in my ear, and he said, dedicate yourself to me, clear as day. And, of course, I do that, and I want to do that even more excellently, because, you know, obviously, we're all human beings, we're not perfect, and there's a lot of ways, like, you know, dedicating yourself to Yahweh is a multifaceted thing. It's not just a one-time thing, or it's it's a constant thing, right? And it reminded me of uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34, and I'm going to read those here from the Amplified Bible. I just read from my Bible app and notes here. Uh, but first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and the character of God. 
and all these things will be given to you also. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> so we worry about the future. It's not for us to worry about. It's not of us to plan about. We should definitely ask God, God willing, we'll be here for another day or for another year or for another however long. And he puts plans and, and, and things on your heart to do if you are willing to listen and obey. He will definitely show you what he wants you to do. Uh, but we also spend a lot of time thinking about the past. We really have to focus on the present. Because each and every day that goes by doesn't come back. And so wasting today's time worrying or thinking about things of the past, first of all, the past has been forgiven and dealt with. And when you are walking with Jesus Christ, when you are born again Christian, and you've been forgiven, you need to walk in the present with God every moment. And so in some of my previous videos, I ask you to review everything that you do, um, everything that you participate in, that you spend time on, that you spend energy on, and to look at things that you have committed yourself to, to make sure to look at your true motives, um, to make sure that those things that take up your limited precious time that there are truly things that God has put on your heart to do. Sometimes we get influenced by others uh, or by worldly trends. You know, the flavor of the day, the this, the that. Oh, everybody's doing that. Maybe I should do that too. Or, you know, or here. And it's almost like the goldfish, you know, flashing. You know, oh, something shiny over here and something shiny over there. And oh, I see this online or I see this on TV or I see... You know, it's all kinds of stuff, right? And, of course, we get influenced by our own flesh, sinful nature, right? So, ask yourself, in everything you do, um, why are you doing those things? What's your motivation? Like, the true motivation, Right. And I mentioned some of the stuff in the past, you know, it's like, oh, I was, the, you know, participating in this, this club, you know, um, to do good things. And yes, like maybe, you know, like 50% of it, I was like, yes, you know, is to help others and, and whatnot and raise funds and do all kinds of things. But the other half of it was personal greed, you know, status, getting in with a certain crowd and feeling more important and things like that. Those are things of the flesh. And that is not the right motivation. And you want to make sure that the motivation is 100% aligned with God. Not 99%, but 100%. And that's part of being dedicated to Yahweh. Okay? It's not just about sitting, you know, in your chair in your or laying in bed or, or, or sitting on your knees or or, you know, and praying all day long and, and just, no, 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 right? It's the thoughts and motivation behind everything we do, everything we say, okay? And um, and sometimes we get ourselves into trouble because we've accepted to participate in some things and um, then we realize it's not for God's glory. There was a, another personal motivation about some things and and so, and it's not God's request for you. And so it means that you need to stop participating or doing what we call unfruitful works, right? Works of the flesh. Because what happens um, 
it takes up your time. And that time, everybody just has the 24 hours in each day. And the enemy likes to use those things to steal your time so that you don't focus on doing the things that God is calling you to do, no matter what that looks like for your life. Okay? So you really uh, need to have time and room to do all the things that God really needs you to do. Each one of us has specific assignments from God. And so you really need to dedicate yourself to Him in all you do, in all you think, in all you live, right? So I'm asking you to carefully reassess your life and how you spend your time. Because he asked that of me. And as I went through things, I mean, you know, I've been um, disabled for many years now. And so I've had a lot of time. But I spent a lot of that time bedridden. And I spent a lot of that time, you know, sleeping, resting, coping with pain and, and all kinds of stuff. And the little time that I actually had to do things in then he knows that's the only time that you have available you really have to make it count okay um, every day that goes by is gone forever you can't buy time every moment can be your last moment So we have a choice as born-again Christians. Do we want to go having done as much as we can for the kingdom of Yahweh God, for Jesus Christ, for the Holy Spirit? Or do we want to go having wasted a lot of our time for things that don't matter? So... I would um, offer that you pray for a couple of things. Ask God, Yahweh God, and I specify Yahweh God uh, regularly in my videos, and um, for a specific reason, because this is a video that can be seen by anyone at any time, and you do not know <clears throat> which God I speak of, if I'm just saying just God all the time, right? I want to be precise because there's a lot of people that pray to the enemy and he's their lowercase g, God, right? And the enemy can grant things. The enemy can do things. Remember in the Bible when Jesus was, you know, uh, was it the 40 days or something? You know, he was just... Out and the enemy tried to convince him, if you will just do this one thing, you know, worship me once, I will give you all these things before you. Right? But Jesus said, no. Get behind me, Satan. Right? You really need to, when you're listening to videos um, and listening to teachings, First of all, take your own Bible and read for yourself the passages being quoted to make sure that the stuff is accurate, okay, and complete. And also, you really need to make sure who you're listening to, that they are really of Yahweh God, okay, speaking about Yahweh, El Shaddai, the Almighty I Am, okay, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit, okay? And so I want to make it clear that I obey Yahweh God, right? I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I follow the teachings and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. So, but there's a lot of deception that is 
coming and, and it's been going on for a long time. But when we're not really careful that the people that we're listening to, that they might not be completely aligned with Yahweh's will. So you have to make sure that you're following people that are talking about Yahweh, God, the creator of all, okay? And that they pray to him first and foremost, okay? So ask Yahweh God what he wants you to focus on each day. Pray in the morning, you know. Thank you, Father, you know, for another great day. How may I serve you today? You know, I know good things will happen to me and through me to serve others and to serve your kingdom, right? How may I be of help to you, Yahweh? How may I be of help to others? And he will guide you. He will put things on your heart. He will present things to you. And go from there. But help him and pray to him to remove anything that is not of him out of your life. And he will remove things or he will point out, hey, look at, think about this. And all of a sudden you think about somebody or you think about uh, something that you're involved in. And he's asking you to reassess that. Okay. So, but when that happens, and this is key, you must be willing to occasionally make someone upset. Make somebody mad at you. Because if you've been doing something with someone for some time or for a little while, and then you're realizing because you're asking God to help clear out things that are not of Him or that don't serve your purpose for Him specifically, and He's telling you to back out of something um, or to say no to something, you have to tell the truth and and... and because you have to obey God. You have to obey Yahweh. And uh, it might mean that you might need to refuse to participate in some things. And or stop participating in some things. Um, and also stop doing unfruitful things with others. Because if you're also doing unfruitful things with others. Uh, you're not only preventing yourself from obeying Yahweh's will for your life, you might be preventing others from also fulfilling Yahweh's will if they're born again Christians too. That they might have so also gotten distracted by something that all of it, it's really not their thing either, but each one of us has an individual journey with Yahweh. And so you might be ready for this step when they're not yet ready they might not be quite as mature in their faith and and that's okay but if you're honest with them and you say you know i prayed about it and uh, i realize that god has some different assignments for my life and i must stop participating in this with you or i must stop you know, doing this. I'm sorry, but, um, you know, I have to side with God. And by doing that and standing your ground and speaking the truth kindly, then hopefully it might make them rethink and even ask, make them ask God for themselves. Hmm. You know, she, it's not for her. Maybe it's not for me either, but maybe it is. But they need to check, right? So, bottom line is, Yahweh has to be put first in every day of our lives. And it's not just about praying first thing in the morning and that's it. But anything that comes up, every thoughts, every ideas or things come out out of the blue or... You hear something and all of a sudden it triggers a thought in your mind. Excuse me. You should ask God. You know, and say, is this something? Why is this standing out? Is this something 
that you want me to look into or is this something you know that is in line with what you I know what the purpose is if you're not sure you can step out and find out God will always always supply and equip you to do what he wants you to do but if you're stepping out and doing something that's not his will that is just of your own idea right then he's he's not going to help you and it's going to be hard much harder whereas if it's okay and it's it's really what he wants you to do you step out and find out and yes it's flowing well and okay things are moving along and it's good and it's it's in line with god's will and it, it's in line with the bible then you know fine continue um so you have to you know kind of be careful assess right um so, but if you're finding yourself in a pickle and you're doing things that you realize aren't aligned with God or, or his plan for your life, then pray, you know, and ask him for his guidance to help you get out of the situation. Always ask for his guidance and he will help you, right? Um, we don't like to say no, right? But we should be saying no. To certain things for sure um, and if you're asked to do something or attend something or participate in something that isn't aligned with God's will then you must politely decline and or tell them that you need to make some changes and just tell the truth right they don't have to like it um, but a lot of people don't want to have confrontation, don't want to have a, a discussion that goes into, no, I'm sorry, I can't participate in that, right? Uh, but you must break free from the manipulation and control of other things that are outside of God on your time. And that's where I'm getting at. Because the enemy will use people, well-intended people, people around you, everything, uh, to try to pull you away from your walk with God, to try to pull you away from what has God has called you to do, to pull you off the narrower path, to try to bring you back to the more secular world, right? And, uh, and so those things come from a wide variety of sources around you. So just remember that God's wisdom and God's will trumps everything. We must be guided by the Holy Spirit at all times. I was reading um, something from Joyce Meyer um, last week, and this is a, just a small excerpt, but she said, living righteously like Jesus doesn't happen overnight, right? And we will all stumble. After all, if we were perfect, <laughs> we wouldn't need a Savior. Hello, right? So still, we must desire in our hearts to fulfill and enjoy our spiritual heritage. So, in closing, I would ask you today, if you're living life as a recreational Christian or as a true servant of Yahweh God, and just as he told me on the weekend, I ask you to dedicate yourself to Yahweh. Dedicate yourself to Jesus Christ. Dedicate yourself to learning from the Holy Spirit. It's a wonderful journey. Much love. I'll see you on Thursday.